Hello and uh, welcome back. This is a new video that I put together that initially started out as some content for the course that I'm teaching um, down here in Bahamas. Um, we needed to use a state manager. Um, I'm not going to teach Redux and I was going to try and show how to manage state using um, uh, context and providers and hooks and stuff like that. I might do an example um, just as a kind of a compare and contrast against Zustand, which I hope I'm saying correctly. But in my research, I found this state manager package called Zustand. Zustand. I, I'm certain I'm not saying it right. But I was intrigued by it because it basically it said me it said bare necessities for state management. It was based on using hooks. It was very simple structure. And after reading the doc, I was like, all right, I'm I'm going to go with this to teach the team. Um, so that they have some basic understanding of a simple state manager they can use to wrap their head around for building uh, mobile applications. Uh, but like I said, I'll point them to references to Redux and also point them to um, how to also solve the same issue using uh, context providers. So, as the documentation says on Zustend, links are also, first of all, there's this whole, there's a whole blog post, which I'll kind of be following the steps of the blog post for the video. There's a whole blog post that kind of lays out a lot of the information on it. There's links um, to uh, for your own reference. And along with that, um, I've kind of broken out the code into sections, kind of describing what I'm doing. Uh, there also is included, as I scroll through all this, there's a full example that exists on StackBlitz, which is how I'm going to kind of walk through the code. And um, as you saw up on the top here, you know, most of the stuff I do, I do with Ionic. I think having a nice UI on top of the code um, makes it just present better. And so that's what I've done here. This example is written in Ionic. Um, I have included all of the source code here inside of the blog posts. I know some folks like to read code. And then as I said, there's also a stack blitz, stack blitz example that is accessible. If you want, you can download the project from stack blitz and kind of spin it up yourself and modify it. Um, so that's what we got here in the blog post that I scrolled quickly through. It's not live yet, but by the time you see this video, it will be live. Um, the, what else have we got here? So here's the link to Zustan, zustan.surge.sh. Um, of course, you have your basic kind of counter uh, example, and I wanted, like I said, I wanted to create a more robust, for lack of a better word, example for the course. Um, but you can click through and you can get to um, the GitHub repo for it. Um, you can scroll down through here and they have basic documentation on creating a store, binding components. They talk about some of the benefits. And then, as I said, they have recipes for different, um, different things you want to try. So I encourage you to take a look at the doc. But um, now let's kind of take a look at the example that I have written. Your basic application, um, just kind of a demo. What you can do is uh, you can delete items. So we just deleted item. You can edit an item. We'll switch from beginners to advanced. We'll save. And then uh, finally, you can add an item. So this is new student. And then you can select one, advance, save student, students added to the list. And so we, we're basically what I'm trying to do is cover your basic CRUD that you would expect to see. You want to be able to add items, remove items, um, edit items, and of course list all the items. And so that's kind of a walkthrough of the example. And then if we go back to the documentation that I had here with this um, with this blog post, you can see that's kind of what we walked through. So it's as simple as the students can be created, updated, or deleted. The first part is that you kind of create the store. So obviously you have to um, uh, import, not only import, um, you need to install Zustend, but then um, where we have our store created site is the store index file. And just to get the store set, we initialized it with this, with this array. And so we have our initial set of data. Um, after that, um, we needed a function to be able to add students. And so you can see here what we're doing is with this set, we're passing in the state, and then uh, we're modifying the student element. So these students right there. Um, and this should be kind of your typical behavior that you see um, working with uh, anyone who's done anything with Redux before. We're basically replacing the state, replacing the student in the state. And so here's our new student that we're adding, which got passed into us. 
and then we're taking the existing set of students and adding them to the array and then returning the new student state. Uh, in the application, um, the interest, one of the interesting parts that I'll touch on is you, if we look inside of our home page here, up at the top, here's how you kind of access the functions. Um, we've exported the store and so you have this use student store and then through that I can get the state and I'm passing this function in. So the state gets passed in and what I want this to return to me is the function called add student. So now I have access to this function called add student. After the UI is done to actually close the modal and get access to the student, I call the add student function and I pass in the appropriate parameters. Kind of this pattern of accessing the functions that exist on the in the store is consistent. Um, you can see here how I get all of the students by using the student store. I get access to the state and then I return it. Um, I get access to the function here, the add student function. I get access to the remove student function. I get access to the upstate student function. So that's kind of what the pattern is consistently on how you get access to the functions. Well, let's go back to um, our, our uh, that's the initial index. Let's go back to our index for our store. Also, you should notice kind of you see this consistent pattern with the set whenever you want to modify the state. So this is how we're adding the student. This is how we're removing the student. This should all be familiar to you. This, these are basic kind of JavaScript array manipulation um, for remove for filter. We're filtering to remove. Um, the update student is similar. We're basically mapping through the list of all of the current students. And when the IDs match, we insert the new student, otherwise we return the existing one. And that's it. Um, what, one thing that is a little bit different that you'll notice here is on the, on the, so we have the detail page. So what happens here is, do you have the list? In way, the way you get the list of students, you just access the store, then you get the state at element from there. And then down inside of our list, we're just mapping through all the students, and so we're creating this array of students here. Um, but what we do to get the detail on the student, which I forgot to show, and nothing's fancy here, I'm just dumping out the JSON object on the student manager, and we're passing in a specific item ID of the element of the student that we want out of the array. And then if you look at the details page here, um, what we're doing is we're using our hook from our history to get the student ID, and then we're accessing the student store, and then from the student store we have this function, um, you know, which was similar to the filter, but this time we're finding the specific student that we want, and then we're returning the student. But if you notice here, we're using this use use callback, and the reason why we're using this just use sorry, the reason why we're using this use callback is to mimeize the or basically cache the value of the student and we pass in the dependency of the student ID. So when you access this page we get the student ID from the parameters. We use the student store to get the specific student that we want and we're basically kind of saving the result. That's what this uh, use callback is doing. We're saving the result to the student dependent on changing of the student ID value. The student ID value will only change when I select a new student. So you can see here we have new student. And if I go down here and I select Joe Johnson, we're getting Joe Johnson. Um, so a new ID is getting passed in, we're making the call and we're getting a new ID. Um, and so if I go back and I select Joe Johnson again, in theory this callback um, should be cached and so we're getting the same result back. And so not much more kind of really is going on here. The rest of this stuff is really Ionic related code. So just to touch on a couple of things, kind of the use callback, I mean the use param to get the ID is a standard React function. Um, we go to the home page. Um, we're, what we're doing here is we're kind of using where we we're using this um, open modal set open modal to kind of indicate. So when I click on the add button, we're changing our state to open modal, which is causing our modal to show. On cancel, we're setting it to false. Um, when we're editing an object, we're using this set modal data. So if we click down here and we look at um, right here, the ion label, well, that, when you click on the label, that's takes you to a new page. But to actually edit an item, let's go down to the buttons. Uh, so edit item, we call our function edit item. And all edit item does is it sets the modal data. 
which is with the current item, and then we call set modal open to true. So our modal dialog appears. If we take a look at our modal, our add student modal, we use this, we add, we use the add student modal for adding items and also for editing items. You know, what we do is we pass in two properties. We pass in the close modal. So when you click the close button, we have a function to call, but we also pass in initial data. And so when we're editing it, we'll pass in the initial data. And so when the component is first launched, um, we are calling this use effect hooks and the use effect hook will set the section information and then set the name into information. Those are the two um, attributes that we, well, the attributes are probably data, data elements that we need when you um, add an element. We have the name and the section. So if we have the values, we'll set them, otherwise we won't. And then on save to close modal, we make sure we pass back the ID if we're given an ID because that's how we know if we need to update or edit a new item. Um, there's nothing else, like I said, advanced in here. This is basic React stuff using Ionic uh, UI. But like I said, I thought we always, I always like to throw a little bit of Ionic in there to kind of for those who are new to it to kind of see see the benefits of it. And so there you have it, a pretty straightforward state management tool. I mean, library, one of the cool things is that you notice that there's no provider anywhere. So I'm not wrapping anything with the provider, um, which is like, which is one of the reasons why I like this tool. It's just a lot easier to explain it. Um, hopefully it's a lot easier for people to kind of wrap their head around it. And then just the ability to create the selectors to get the functions that you need and to get the data points that you want from inside the store. I, I think it's um, a great tool and you know, kind of like they say here on the site, it it gives you really. Where's I want to want to throw the tagline in, you know, fall small, fast, scalable, bare bones state management solution. That's what I like. It's really bare bones. Um, it's based on hooks, which most people are kind of wrapping their head around. There's no boilerplate, and you can pretty much kind of roll your own however you want to roll it, and and it just works. So, um, like I said, this is a quick intro to it. I'm going to play with this a little bit more to see if it's something I might use in some more of our projects. Uh, but um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, please make sure you check out the source code and kind of play with the application that was built for you here. You can fork it if you like. Download it and try to run it also. Um, there's a little bit more detail. I'm kind of breaking down the steps separately for like the function to add, update, and delete. Kind of explaining the way we're um, getting additional data out of there with the use callback. So um, please check this, check this out. I hope you enjoy it. And i um, open to ideas and some new content to create. Um, and uh, take care and see you next time. Bye.